The trainer said that he gets really spooked when another horse comes up behind him, but we've never seen it. We've tested it out. Oh my goodness, you're so fluffy. These wrought iron gates are just really heavy, and over time they ended up sagging down to the point where it's getting really hard to open them. Uh, these are pretty tiny, but you should see their babies, man. They're little itty bitty things. I am looking at a draft horse who lost probably close to half of his foot. Said it'd be six months to a year before I would be able to get this done on this horse. I told him a couple weeks, looks like we both lied. This is Copper. Copper was an owner's surrender, was it last week? And this is our first time messing with him, really. Besides catching him, he's okay to catch out there. All right, well, we're gonna work on his feet today. He's about two years old. Those are still baby teeth right there growing in. So, to start off, I do want him to learn how to send around, go around, lunge, all that. I'm gonna start off pretty loose here. I'm gonna just ask. By lifting that out there, he tends to take a step. I'm gonna relax a little bit. I'm gonna go again. And I might start bumping there. And as soon as he wants to take that step forward, I'm gonna go ahead and relax that. I might go again, and just ask. As soon as he wants to start going that direction I want him to go, I'm gonna relax. Just start with the baby steps, especially if they are just babies. I want his attention to stay on me. I'm gonna switch sides. Get pretty good on that side. Ask him to back up, see if he knows that. So with backing up, you want them to learn how to back up softly. That means backing up with their head in a relaxed position. A lot of people think that they could just take the lead rope and push it to the chest. <laughs> okay, settle down. But you actually just want to start by going side to side until they back up and then to get off that pressure. And then once you get them good at that, you might start holding it a little longer until they drop their head like that. Another thing I want him to know is how to flex left and right, get his head towards me if I got pressure going over here. And you gotta remember to reward that slightest try. If they try for you, you gotta give it to them. So the girls were saying that he has trouble picking up his feet. And we do need to get him trimmed eventually, so I might start by rubbing down his foot. He's going to start pinching right there. And he started picking it up for me. Hold it out here a little bit. Bring it back underneath of him, move it side to side. Hit it a little bit like that. What happened? Was that weird? So like I said before, with the back feet, use a rope the first time. Don't get yourself in a position where you can get yourself hurt. I see way too many people that come out and they grab their lead rope and they get it all coiled up like they're gonna go out and rope them with their lead rope. What happens if that horse pulls back? There's my fingers. If that horse keeps pulling back, you're not gonna have those fingers anymore. So I like to get my lead rope organized in a way where if that horse pulls back, <laughs> I don't have anything caught in the loop. And I'm always holding on to this part, at least with my pinky, the end. That way, if he wants to get away, I can let some of that slack go, but I still have control over him. See what he does. He doesn't really care. I'll give it back to him. He's so weird. Whenever I go to set his foot down, he has that reaction like, I gotta get out of there. So there's no telling what happened to him before but over time he will lose that habit. So like I said, since he is <laughs> a younger horse, I um, won't do too much with them. That's probably all I'm gonna do for the first time, just see if I can get their feet picked up, make sure they know the basics, being sent around, um, staying relaxed, getting their head lowered, 
stepping their hindquarters around. And I'm gonna call that good for him for today. And it's really important with these babies and with pretty much any horse that you do not drill them. You don't need to do it over and over and over again looking to make it perfect. Just get one step in the right direction and call that good. Move on to something else. You don't need to just consistently make them do that thing until you think it's perfect because then they're just going to get sick of it. Next time you pull them out, they're not going to want to do it at all. So just go for those baby steps one thing at a time. So that's it for him. I'm putting him up and I think I got a few other things I got to do. are all gathered here today because um, we have an announcement. I know it's a little random at on a Wednesday for me to tell everybody to please come in and meet in here. So everybody's wondering what is going on. Um, so we did want to let you know that we know that Caleb and Shelby are going to be leaving this afternoon. Um, they're going to be going somewhere tropical and having an amazing wedding. Um, but we also had another announcement before they left. So. Shelby has let us know that whenever, um, she, whenever she was thinking about returning, she has decided that she would like to go on ahead and resign and return um, after the honeymoon and her and Caleb just build a life together and be a wife and hopefully a mother soon. So, <laughs> right, Emma? Not soon, but yeah. Not, soon. Soon. Not, soon. Not very yeah. soon. Someday, yeah. maybe. So do you want to say anything, Shelby? I mean, I started working here when I was 13, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the six years that I've worked here, so I'm going to miss you guys all a lot. Yeah, We're six miss you years, too. So. so. So you've been an amazing volunteer, and then come on and to be an employee, and it's just been an honor having you here uh, as part of our team. We'll miss you. If you get bored, let us know. Uh, <laughs> probably find a spot for you again. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate everything you've done. Mm -hmm. and congratulations. Yeah, and congratulations. You two are heading off and getting married. Horse plus love strikes again. So we're really, really excited for you two. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll miss, miss y'all while you're on the honeymoon. Be, and you'll be back. I'll and, be back and, 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 uh, and enjoy married life. Congratulations. Yes, we'll see you guys. Bye. Throw the flowers. <laughs> Alright, we got some adopters that just pulled up. They're here to look at Trip. Um, they also showed some interest in adopting some barn cats as well, and we got plenty. Um, come spring, early part of summer, we're getting a lot of kittens in, a lot of cats. Um, so if y'all are interested in adopting a cat from us, or even a horse, you can email adoptions at horsehumane.org, and CJ will get you fixed up with all the right paperwork that you'll need to fill out. But yeah, so let's go see if Trip gets to go to his new home today. So here's Trip, and he does ride in English and Western, so. He came from a trainer, and he, the trainer said that he gets really spooked when another horse comes up behind him, but we've never seen it, we've tested it out. Mm -hmm. So that's just something. Like come up with another horse right behind him, yeah. and it was fine, so we're not sure where that came from, but okay. just so you know. Yeah. Not saying he won't it do it on It could pop up road, again, yeah. But I've had her coming up behind okay. me on him with like, the Tennessee walkers that kind of like to come up on you fast. Yeah. So he, he didn't do anything. Okay. So. Just when, when he got spooked, what did he say he did? So he said he bolted, but the only thing that we've ever seen him is he spooked at a bird one time and he just stopped and looked at it. So. Um, is the place where you guys ride, is it like kind of rocky or is it more? A little bit. It's got, yeah, it's our wood, wooded area. Okay. It's a little okay. bit rocky. But. If the ground is soft, he might do okay without them, but we just like to do it because it makes him more comfortable. Like we usually ride out on the rocky areas and stuff. So. You can just pick up his feet, pick them out like usual. Make sure you don't have any like rocks or anything. Where did you say he was a little sensitive on he's, the front feet? Or was um, it? Yeah, he's touching on the fronts. Um, his backs, he did fine. We didn't put boots on him on the backs and he did fine with it. He's a little flat footed, so it just helps him because he's tender on that sole. So you just pick it out and then these can go. Take the Velcro off, just like that. You can see how it has those tabs under there. Oh, yeah. Goes right over his toe. Mm -hmm. 
You want to write them next? Yeah. I like it. I like him. <laughs> I like him. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, let's get you guys an adoption photo. Y'all can get in there. These guys are kind of scared, um, but when you pet them, they let you pet them, and I think they love being barn cats. Mom, this cat actually really likes me. So these two are also available. She's available. Yes. Um, she's actually really sweet. And so she's kind of she's kind of funny because she she was um yeah so she could be. So we she was surrendered I think in like January or something. And then whenever we don't have really have the setup to keep them in cages long term so we let her go and we just feed them out here and she disappeared for like three months and no one saw or heard from her and then she just popped up in quarantine like a couple weeks ago and now she's like super sweet and loves people <laughs> she looks like a little mini lion okay let's see oh my goodness you're so fluffy So for today, we're going to go with Trip and these two kitties. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. They're adopting Trip and two of our barn cats. So I have to scan them to figure out who they are. <laughs> awesome! Oh, you guys can move Trip's photo from looking for love to found love this month. We found out about Horse Plus from the internet. Yeah. Yep. On Facebook. On Facebook, I found. Yeah. Yeah. And then watching it on YouTube. And it's been an amazing experience here. Everybody is so nice and helpful, and I couldn't ask for it to be any nicer. What? We adopted Trip, Trip and Patsy, Patsy and Shania. Uh, two cats and a horse. Right? Yes. A horse. Yeah. Yeah. They have decided to take Trip home. Um, they're actually not going to be able to transport him back to their place today, so they're going to come back in a few days and pick him up. So we have Murray Fence Company here today. They are resetting our gates that they hung a couple months ago. These wrought iron gates are just really heavy and over time they ended up sagging down to the point where it's getting really hard to open them. So they're putting on an adjustable rod and they're gonna weld it to the top of this four x four and go down to the bottom of the round pole there. And it's gonna have a 9 nut on it that I can adjust. So if the gate starts sagging again, I just need to tighten that up and then lift that gate back where it needs to go. They had to dig it up a little bit and they put about eight more bags of concrete down in those posts. Um, they put four more down on this corner post here and they put this rod in here. Come over here. So what they did is they welded the rod right, the rod right here and over there in the bottom. They got these two nuts on here. So if, I, if it starts sagging again, I just got to loosen this nut up, tighten this one down and pull it up a little bit more and I just tighten this one back down on it. So this is going to help out a lot. Today we have Quint here. He's going to be doing some farrier work for us today. Um, we have quite the lineup <laughs> going on, um, but we're hoping to get a lot of horses trimmed today. So this is the horse that had his eye removed. It had the cancerous mass on it that we got in the auction last month. Um, Doc did the procedure to remove it. It is looking like it's a little bit swollen and he's got some pus coming out of it. So we're gonna get this flushed out. He isn't on antibiotics, but we're gonna get him flushed and see how he does with that. This is Best Man's Hanover. Best man. 
I'm gonna call him man for short. So this guy had a serious abscess. This is what all this black is. Just so you know. Yeah, if you don't mind. It's an old one. He had an abscess in both rears. On the lateral heel on that one. Was it the? No, sorry. Same side, left side. He had abscess in this one. The heel is gone still. And then, they're all old. They're just growing out. So this mare is really worked up about getting her feet done. Um, so we were gonna give her some sedation. She was really tense though and really moving. So we opted to give it in the muscle instead of the vein. So that way we didn't risk going in the carotid artery um, just with how tense she was. So we are gonna let her calm down and let that medication take effect. Cause once it's in the muscle, it does take longer than the vein. She's also in heat, which helps nothing. Those are the tiniest hooves I've seen. Well, these are pretty tiny, but you should see their babies, man. They're little itty bitty things. What you looking at, Quint? I am looking at a draft horse who lost probably close to half of his foot from a really bad abscess in the past. And I just wanted to see how he was doing. He appears to be doing okay under the circumstances. Looking a lot better than before. Um, there's a little bit of improvement. He needs to grow out. Like, what do you have to do in order to make it better? I mean, time is the biggest thing, and the other thing is just trying to keep it clean. Um, lack of infection, which now there's not that big pocket in there holding all the fungus and bacteria and manure and everything else that's in there. So it, he should be doing better. It's just gonna take time to heal and to grow. Oak, he had a big piece of his hoof come off yesterday. Um, so this part over here was hanging off already and it was just connected by about, I don't know, about two inches right there. So I had to pull this off and then twist it to take it off. So right now he's just got a bunch of exposed lamina. We're trying to figure out exactly what the game plan is when they come out on Thursday. Um, he was talking about uh, an epoxy that you can put on the hoof. Um, you put like a silicone mold around it and you inject the epoxy in, but we're not exactly sure how our farrier is going to handle that Thursday. Today went really well. We got a lot of horses done. Um, they were behaved for the most part. And um, we had a good system today. So we were able to get a lot done, help a lot of horses out, and uh, get their feet maintained. It was good. How many did we get done? We got nine done. We looked at a tenth, but uh, he needs a little bit more training and his feet really weren't in, in, in need today. So we decided to skip him today and allow Corey and some of the other trainers to work on them. During our adoption event, we had some people come out and they looked at Sprout and Nova and they weren't quite sure, they needed some time to think about it and uh, we got a call a little while later and they decided that they wanted to um, adopt uh, Sprout and Nova into their family, so they're here today to pick them up. Alright, smile. Dr. Duncan is here and we're going to do some Coggins and some health checks and who knows what else. Lady Glitter Sparkles. So she needs her breakover point brought back a lot and the ferry was supposed to be here tomorrow but they had to go to a funeral and she's really sore and so she could barely walk and that helps a lot just having that on so we can get those feet trimmed back. 
But she should be okay. She was one that we did the nerve blocks on. She responded great to us. So as soon as we like fix those feet, yeah. she should be great to be past your sound. Teeth floating again. Okay. She's another old skinny girl. So we're going to see what's going on with her teeth. That's a shadow foot. All right, shadow foot. Oh yeah, her uh, sclera. Her sclera is super red in that eye. Compared to the other one, I was gonna have someone look at that. I think she's got a cataract too, but. Yeah. It's not greatly <laughs> visual in it either. Yeah, she's got a mature cataract. Blind and both? No, just the left. So Dr. Duncan just got done. We did three Coggins and health checks on some new owner surrenders. And then we got three teeth floats done as well on some old ladies. So this is Shadowfoot. She is the one that almost struck out at me and Chloe and almost nailed us in the face uh, while we were doing the Coggins. We were able to get the Coggins done. I'm about to bring her into the round pen with another owner surrender that came with her named Mouse. Uh, they're really buddy sour. So I'm gonna work on that issue with them both at the same time in the round pen. So if you got two horses that are really buddy sour to each other, they're gonna stick together like this. What you want to do, or one way to do it, I should say, is to bring them both in the round pen at the same time, and you're gonna just work them around until they want to stay away from each other. So if they want to be next to each other, you're gonna put more pressure on. As soon as they think about separating, you're gonna take that pressure off. I'm just gonna keep the pressure on right here, maybe get a little more. Now if one stops here, I'm gonna leave that one alone that stopped and wait to see if the other one wants to get back with it or stay away from him. So if they're not really next to each other, I'm just gonna let them think about it a little bit, have a bit of a break. Might send her off over there. So I don't want you over here. Now she's gonna come back around here. They're gonna get with each other again. Put the pressure on. This exercise does take a while. You can kind of help them out a little bit by cutting them off, see if you can get one to switch directions and then leave them alone right there when they're thinking away from each other. Give them a little extra encouragement to get away from each other. Now Shadowfoot here might come all the way back around, then you come and put the pressure on again, say, all right, you guys want to keep moving, keep moving. See if I can help them out again. So that's one way to work on buddy sourness. Um, there's several different ways. I find this one works really well. It's the best one that I've seen. It's the best way I've seen to do it. I'm sure there's better ways out there that I have not seen yet, but this way definitely works for me. I'm Kelsey and I'm a trainer at Horse Plus. My job is to evaluate the horses. I will ride them. We get the ones coming in from quarantine and check them out, see if they'll pick up their feet, see what they know is knowledge in here. It's about an everyday thing. It's the best job you could possibly have for me. Love spending the time with them. It's just something that, if you love horses, it's one of the best things to do. So the transporter for the three Mustangs just got here. We're gonna get them offloaded and give them a quick uh, visual evaluation and then go from there. So I wanna get this halter off of this horse before we take off for the night. Uh, we had just had three Mustangs surrendered to us. They said they were, they were really aggressive, but so far they seem to be frightful. Kelsey's over there. She's able to hand feed those two that are over there. So we're just gonna get this halter off and then we're gonna be going home for the night. They just seem really fearful. I mean, it's pretty common they get in a new place. They have been handled. They probably haven't been handled much. Just gonna wait a minute, let him know that I'm not here to hurt him. Next time he turns and looks at me, I might try to pet him. This has been on there a long time. 
went well. Uh, he's a little fearful, so it took a little bit for me to get the halter off, but um, I started petting him and kind of settled down a little bit. Kelsey was over there giving him some food. He seemed to really like that, so we're gonna be out here tomorrow working with them and see how they do. This is Trip. Uh, he is getting picked up today. He was adopted last week, or was it earlier this week? Earlier this week. He was adopted earlier this week and he's getting picked up today. The people that are picking him up also want a tour of the facility, so I'm gonna go ahead and give them a tour. Kelsey's gonna bring him over to the obstacle course and kind of show off the obstacle course a little bit. She's giving the look of disapproval over here, but she's got this. You gonna get it all on camera? Yeah. You gonna follow us around? Everything. Okay, cool. So this is our intake barn here. It's where if we get an owner surrender, they'll come in and we'll have them in here for a few days until the vet evaluates them and then we'll turn them out to their pastures. This is actually one of our residents. So this is Gray. We've had Gray for over seven years, I believe. And he actually lives off site at another pasture that we lease out. He's going back to that pasture right after I'm done with this tour, actually. <laughs> and we have all our cats over here. So we accept all animals. It does not matter what they are, we will take them. Uh, with dogs, we do try to have another facility take them. If they can't, then we'll hold on to them. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys watched, but he's the one that came in with the cancer on his eyeball. Yeah. So it has been uh, taken out. And he's calmed down a lot since we removed that eye. It's pretty insane how much he's calmed down from that. He was trying to run people over in the pastures and it was just a dangerous situation. Now he's as sweet as can be. And I think Kelsey actually brought Trip over there into the obstacle course. These are all different things just to kind of simulate what you might run into out on the trail. So like low brush that might brush up against their feet or walking through some bushes like this one right here. Are you going to jump over it with him? Yeah. All right. He says, I don't know about this. <laughs> it's pretty great. All right, on to the next thing. So this is our soon to be new vet barn. Oh, so we will have one on site then. Yeah. All the time. That's what we're working towards. That's awesome. It'll be like a bathroom and storage room. We're gonna have a washer and dryer back there. The next room over is gonna be, um, like another like storage area, we're gonna have medical tables in there so we can perform different surgeries on dogs, cats, whatever we get in. And then the far one is gonna be the horse surgery room. We're gonna have hoists in there that we can actually lift them up, put them on the table and do like more in-depth operations on horses. We could actually start helping a lot more. We usually have like our mules and donkeys out here in this pasture. Um, and the rest of them, like this, this one right here is our retirement pasture, we call it. So this is where all the pasture pets, uh, older horses go that need a little bit more grain. Yeah. This is actually our maternity pasture right here. Yeah, they're all pregnant. Oh. And they're unhandled. <laughs> the sweetest donkey, she'll actually let you touch her. Say, so where's my cookie? This place is amazing. It is. It really is. Yeah. And we're just, you know, continuing to expand. We're going to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> we came to pick up Trip and take him home to Kentucky. We wanted to go on a tour because um, my mom literally has watched the show nonstop. Um, we've watched the show and we were just interested to see how everything works. It was amazing. It was great. This is a new owner surrender that we got yesterday. His name is Spirit. He actually came from the Salt Lake City um, herd. He was round up by the BLM. I'm, I'm gonna work a little bit on just basic groundwork, getting him to send around, disengaging his hindquarters, moving his shoulders around, backing up and lowering his head. I'm also gonna work on picking up his feet. I just kinda wanna see where he's at, what we need to do. Um, yeah, we'll see how he does. 
So you're working with a new horse, a Mustang, you don't know how they're gonna react. This thing might be unhandled, it might be wild, it might try to come and kill you. Wanna make sure that you have your lead rope somewhat short. If he wants to try to step towards me with this hind end, I'm gonna reach up over here and I'm gonna get his hind end away from me. If I was really worried about him and I thought he was completely unhandled, then I'd have my flag with me to kind of help keep him away from me. But he is doing pretty well. Just gonna keep trying here until I get that foot caught. And it might be a little bit of a rodeo once I get that uh, foot picked up. But we'll see. Now I do have this foot. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure there. I'm gonna see if he understands what I'm asking him. There we go. I'm gonna ask him again. He's kind of standing a little awkward. Let me try to get him fixed up here. He doesn't want to move his hind end. I've never seen this before. There you go. So you can still move your feet. I ain't trapping you up. So this is probably the first time anyone's done this with him. As soon as he wants to get that foot off the ground, I am gonna relax the pressure. With these horses, you have to be really on top of your timing of release. If you're not, you're not gonna get anything done. They're just gonna get angry and you're gonna get yourself in a wreck. And I'm gonna call that good on that foot for the day. Now I'm gonna see what I can do with this back foot here. Kick around. Once he settles, he's getting it right back. Ooh, look at you go, boy. He is doing very well with all of this. Since he's six years old, I'm gonna work a little bit more on desensitizing. I might even throw a saddle pad up on his back and see how he does with that today. So I'm not hitting with it. I'm actually just bringing it up and letting it settle down on him. I'm gonna move his feet while I'm doing this too. He might've been frozen there in fear. Let him think about it, have a little bit of a break. There he goes, looking and chewing. We'll come over to this side, do the same thing. Maybe start off with it over here. And then it's gonna touch you. Hey, it's gonna touch you. Hey, it might touch you here. It might touch your butt. So I'm not sure if this horse has ever had anything on his back before, but he's doing really well. I'm gonna introduce the saddle pad, fold it up first, let him kind of check it out. Gonna wait, let him reach out and touch it. So he's actually not smelling. A lot of people think that when a horse reaches out with its nose, that they're trying to smell the thing. The truth is they could smell this from all the way across the pen. He could smell that bottle of fly spray over there. He could smell my saddle sitting on the, on the round pen there. He's touching it with his whiskers so he can feel what it is. That's how they figure things out. So now there he is. I'm gonna touch him on the neck with it. I'm gonna take it away. Let him reach for it again. Start to get a little more careless with it, the more comfortable he gets with it. Let him see it nice and big, touching him. Let go like that a few times. Let it just fall off. Do that again. Let it fall off. Now, I'm just gonna set it up there. He's really unsure about that up there. We're gonna let him figure it out. Let me give him some encouragement here. Let him know that he's doing a great job. The guy that dropped him off yesterday said it'd be six months to a year before I would be able to get this done on this horse. I told him a couple weeks, looks like we both lied. Ask him to come forward with it up there. It might feel a little weird to him. He's probably never had anything up there, but he's gotta know that he can move freely with anything up there. Good job, buddy. Good job. Lead him around a little bit more with that up there. Might even send him around me with it up there. Doing pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna take it off. And that's it for him for today. Next time we come out, we'll do all that same stuff again. We'll see how he's doing. I might have thrown in a couple more things. And depending on how well he picks it up, we'll probably have him saddled up in a couple weeks.